Sometimes when we're learning to place IV catheters, we're told things about mistakes that we're making, such as, oh, you bird that catheter, pull it out, let's start over, or you must have went all the way through, things of that nature. And due to the nature of the actual skill that we're performing, we can't see the mistakes that we're making to help correct them later. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some of the mistakes that are made, and I have a great little dummy that mimics a vein that has open portal windows for you to be able to actually see some of the common errors that we come across with IV catheter placement. So let's get started. First, we're going to start on a routine IV catheter placement with patient Penelope here. So the vein that we're working with today, I have a dummy rigged up on Penelope. And so we're going to mimic a cephalic vein placement. So the joint that we're looking to reference when we're deciding the appropriate place to place this catheter is the carpus. So we wanna start just above or proximal to the carpus if we're using a front leg on a patient. And the reason why we want to do this is if we accidentally blow the vein in an unsuccessful attempt, we can always move up the same leg and reattempt to place a catheter. If we start too high, we'll have to move to a different leg, a different site to get that catheter placed. So when we're placing an IV catheter, we wanna first start with clipping the area. I wanna just take this moment to remind you that when we use clippers on patients, we always want to use the flat part of the blade in contact with their skin, not be angled up on the teeth. So with Penelope here, we're gonna keep this blade nice and flat as we're shaving. Once we get up into the teeth, that's where we run into causing clipper burn for our patients. So just be mindful of that when you're clipping up your patients. We do wanna do a generous area around the insertion site. The next step that we wanna do is to clean the area. I'm not gonna get Penelope wet since she is a dummy, but usually we'll do three and three with chlorhexidine scrub and alcohol. There are some other theories and different ways out there, so use whatever your hospital or school protocol is. Once you've cleaned the area, don't touch it again. So do all of your touching and feeling of the vein before we get the area clean, okay? It doesn't matter whether you're wearing gloves or if you wash your hands before, you're still gonna make the area dirty by touching it again. So feel before, clean after. All right, now that we're all clean, let's be sure that we've selected the appropriate size catheter for our patient. So I have several displayed out here. We use 14 gauge, sometimes you'll see those around small animal clinics, we use them a lot in large animal. I have two 18 gauge, one nice long two inch one and an inch and a quarter, a 20 gauge, a 22 and a 24. So for dogs, we should be using an 18 to 20 gauge, so 20 gauge for those small medium dogs, and then a 22 gauge for a cat, and our 24 reserved for very small pediatric patients. Uh, sometimes, you know, with the micro and toy breeds, we might need to use a 22 gauge, but really we should stay away from those for dogs. Use the size appropriate for your patient. All right, let's go ahead and place this IV catheter into patient Penelope. So we're gonna take a pretty shallow angle for our small animal patients. We're gonna go ahead and be assertive and push through the skin in the vein, decrease our angle and advance a hair more to make sure our catheter made it in. We'll go over that more later. And then hold our stylet still and advance our IV catheter into the patient. And we're gonna advance it all the way up to the hub and then remove our stylet. We're gonna place our cap on and it's really important that at this point, we still restrain the patient with our non-dominant hand and keep a thumb on our cap so that if our patient flails, our catheter is gonna stay in place. Taping is something that's different among different technicians. Even all of the technicians in your hospital might have different ways that they prefer to tape. I prefer to do a skinny piece upside down to secure the actual tiny catheter into place. So we'll do this once around. Then I use a larger piece with a notch to secure it from the front. P 
Patient Penelope's skin is not the easiest skin to tape, but this will also secure our catheter from the front and the back. Then I use a skinny piece, last skinny piece, and this one secures my cap into place. So I do like to put this one all the way around my patient's leg. I've seen some other technicians that call it pants. So I'll just put it under and cross it over the top for the cap. Any way that works for you is just fine. The final step is the vet wrap over. I like to cut a little hole in it to put my cap through so they always have a nice clean surface here to work with. All right. So that's the placement of our periphery catheter in patient Penelope. So now that we know what that looks like, everybody knows what that looks like, we'll go ahead and move on to our little other dummy that has the portals in it so we can see what some of the mistakes look like that you might run into. Let's get started with the decrease of angle that I mentioned during the catheter placement. Notice on our IV catheter stylet here, there is the beveled edge, just like you would see on any other regular needle. And the beveled edge should be up anytime we're placing an IV catheter. And the reason why I'm bringing this to your attention is that once the beveled edge is into the vein, and let me get it lodged into my dummy here. So once we have our beveled edge into the vein, you can see it on the edge of the vein there. That's where you get that first flash of blood coming back. But if you look closely, the actual catheter itself is still in the wall of the vein and not actually into the vein yet. If we continue at this angle, we have a chance of just puncturing out the back side of the vein, then our catheter won't advance. But if we slightly decrease our angle and advance just a little bit, we're still cleanly in the vein for a nice clean advancement of our catheter. In our second example, something you may have heard multiple times is, you bird it, pull it out, let's start over. So what that means is you may have ended up stuck down on the opposite side of the vein wall here, and your catheter runs into the vein wall, or even just totally outside of the vein in any of the structures around, and then your catheter won't advance. The important thing that I want to show you here is that while a catheter is made of a soft and pliable material, if you take a really close look at the end there, now you can see from my mishap of running into structures to where the catheter did not feed smoothly into the vein, now I have this little bird edge. So even though this is soft and pliable, imagine having this little bird end, which actually feels a little roughened, inside your vein. So this is a really good thing to keep in mind for just patient care and patient comfort that if we did advance that catheter and there is a potential of burring, go ahead and pull that one out, discard it, and try again. So the third thing that I wanna talk about is the catheter that didn't advance proper appropriately and where we go from here. So let's go ahead and get our catheter placed in our dummy here. All right. So we're in the vein, and then if for some reason, let's say we went out the other side, we advance our catheter off of our stylet a little bit. What I see a lot with new folks is they'll advance like this. So we're pushing the catheter in, but we're also pulling the stylet out simultaneously. And then once we realize we're maybe not in the same place or we've hit a wall and we're not advancing any further, it seems like the automatic next step is to shove the stylet back in. Don't ever do this. Always pull your catheter back to your stylet rather than advancing your stylet into the catheter. And I'll show you why here. I pre-broke this one so you guys could see it here. So when we have our catheter wedged up and our sharp stylet coming through, again, we talked about that pliable material See how that stylet stabbed very easy through that IV catheter. Now we run the risk, since this is all in our patient, we run the risk of this dislodging and being stuck in our patient. So if we're in a, in a situation where we need to get the catheter back on, always pull your catheter back towards your stylet rather than the other way around. 
And what I really like to do with these guys is use my thumb and my second finger to control and drive the stylet. And then if you look closely, you can see that there are a couple of little notches right on the actual catheter. This is for the locking to be able to lock the cap on. So I like to lock my four fingernail on this. So it's all separate drivers. This controls my stylet and this guy controls my catheter, pushing him in or having this tab locked under my nail to pull him back to the stylet so I don't run into that issue. Then let me just finish by quickly going ahead and placing this catheter in on a window so you can see. So I had my beveled edge up. We advance until our catheter is in place here. So I dropped my angle, advanced a little bit further. Note that I have my driving fingers on my stylet and they are parked. And my forefinger is running my tabs and he's going to advance my catheter off of my stylet. This does have a little bit harder push than normal skin, I will say that, than a normal small animal catheter, just because of the nature of the thickened wall of the Foley catheter. And in real life, when you're doing large animal work, their skin is quite a bit thicker, so you will have a little bit harder push, but it should always be a smooth push if we're where we need to be in getting that catheter into place. Well, that wraps us up for this video and the dummy veins that you saw today that we used, I made those pretty simply by using a rolled up magazine, a Foley catheter, and then just placing vet wrap over the top to secure the Foley onto the magazine. So it's a pretty cheap thing to make to be able to sort of mimic what you would feel for an IV catheter placement. If you'd like to learn more about options, career options for credentialed veterinary technicians, feel free to check out my Kendra the Vet Tech podcast. It can be found on your favorite podcast platforms or through my website at kendrathevettech.com. If you enjoyed this video today, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel below. Leave any questions, comments, or concerns you might have. If you have some that you'd like to share but not publicly, feel free to contact me at kendrathevettech at gmail.com. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.